like, do you want me to send you, you know, what I've got so far? How would you like me to send it to you? Email or phone number, you know, whatever. Thinking that, you know, he's not going to give this random little blonde English dude his number because he's Pete Wentz. Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound, here with another of our video calls while we're all stuck at home. I'm delighted that Ryan from The Hummer is on the line right now. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm not too bad. How are you? Good, man. Good to catch up with you. I've been uh, starting this with uh, everybody recently, just kicking off by saying, genuinely, how are you doing? It's weird times we're living in. How are you getting on where you are right now, man? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just outside on my balcony, outside my room at the moment. I thought I'd try and get a little bit of sun while it's, while it's out. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're just kind of spending time making more music um and just you know doing stuff like covers we've been doing a little home workout to try and keep the body and mind uh, strong so yeah we're just kind of chilling and doing whatever we can to keep our minds occupied i guess nice home workout is that the full band do you guys you guys get in a routine together are you um well there's it's me and dan uh live together at the moment um so the guys normally come around and we do a bit of boxing and and uh and whatever but um yeah it's just me and dan at the moment so we've been we've been trying to do as much as we can nice yeah you gotta, gotta keep yourself occupied man i appreciate that yeah. uh let's talk about new music and i want to come on to whatever you've been working on in quarantine for a start because we will get on to that in a minute yeah. but first up let's talk about that single man because cover you what a great song that is uh talk to me about where that came from and i guess about working with travis as well because that's got to be a great experience yeah i mean yeah, it was a mind-blowing experience, really. I mean, if you said, you know, five or six years ago when we started the band that we'd be on our third record and, and recording it in LA and, and working with people like Travis Barker, um, you know, I think we'd all we'd all just lose our minds at that. And, and you know, he, he kind of came into the studio. He's a busy dude. Um, so he was, he was supposed to come in a few times um and then couldn't so we were just kind of cracking on with the album and then um one day feldy was just on facetime to someone and it was travis and he just got out of the shower and uh he was like i'll be around in like two minutes so um so yeah we we're like okay he's actually coming he's coming in and then he kind of walked in and yeah it was very surreal um he's just a very chilled laid back cool dude as you could imagine and uh yeah to watch him play drums like in the flesh right there was was insane and for it to be on one of our songs and for him to support our music is uh, is a huge deal so um yeah he's he's a legend um and one of our favorite artists of all times yeah yeah, what, Sorry, I really, yeah. what I really, really love about Travis is that he he does seem to have gotten to the habit, particularly in the last couple of years, of he finds a band or an artist that he likes and wants to support and really does kind of almost take on a kind of mentor role, it looks like, with a lot of people. Did you find he was good with the advice and, and kind of working with him in that collaborative way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he was, he was very open um, and just kind of, yeah, I mean, to him it wasn't, obviously to us it was a huge deal, but to him he's Travis Barker, so it's, He's, you know, he's just got this aura about him and he, he, I mean, he made it feel very relaxed and chill. It, you know, he wasn't, um, he wasn't trying to make it like I'm Travis Barker and, and stuff like that. So it was just nice to kind of be around someone like him and to be, I guess, treated, you know, not as an equal because you'd expect that, but just, you know, so friendly and, and uh, you know, because we, we hadn't really met him too many times before that. So um it was very special and and i'm sure that we'll do more in the future as well so and fingers crossed we'd love to hear it um let's talk about this album because it's a very exciting time for you guys the album's kind of gearing up let's talk about the title first of all i'd rather die than let you in that is an evocative <laughs> provocative title right there why did you guys settle on that for for the record um it, so the song we had a, we have a song called i'd rather die than let you in um which was which is on the record um and the the album name ca came after uh, we'd actually finished it um and with everything that has happened with us in like the past two or three years we uh you know we had we found out some very dirty dark stuff about our 
previous record label management um, and had to had to make some decisions that were hard to make, um, but for the right of the band and for the fans. Um, so there was quite a long time. Yeah, there was at least six or seven months where we were in a kind of uh, limbo and weren't allowed to release music and et cetera, et cetera. So there was a dark time for us um, getting out of all of that. And this album is is about a lot of things, but a lot of it is about that situation, going through that and coming out on the other end and, and kind of, um, yeah, kind of winning, um, I guess. So the, the title, I'd Rather Die Than Let You In, kind of, I think for us, summed up, um, you know, how we felt about everything that happened. You know, we, we would rather... You know, we're, we're basically we're never going to stop doing this. The hunter's never going to stop being the hunter, and there's people that were trying to bring us down and stop us. Um, you know, we weren't going to let that go. Um, so yeah, it's I'd rather die than let you, you know, inside get inside of me and, and affect me and bring me down, basically. Well, it's funny as well. You say that, like, I'm sure lyrically there's a lot of that through the themes, but even musically, just from the few songs I've had the chance to hear of the record. Um, <laughs> you guys you're taking a big step forward it feels really cool it still sounds like you guys and still got those familiar melodies and all that kind of stuff but it really feels like you've gone you know what we're going to go bigger this time we're going to go even bigger and make it a bigger sound on this was that a conscious effort musically as well i take it yeah i think um again you know since we first started we listened to such um a large variety of music and the first two albums have been kind of I guess started off as kind of indie rock pop um, which we love um, but we've always kind of wanted to delve into lots of different uh, instrumentation and and try lots of different uh, you know merging of genres um, and we listen to a lot of heavier music as well like Deftones, Slipknot, Korn you know so we wanted to bring that out um, and we had tried to before on previous albums but we're kind of confined to what we were and what they wanted us to be. So this time around, it kind of felt like for the first time we could really be in a situation where we can really tell our own story and have kind of no limitations on it. Um, and finally, you know, experiment and do what we've always wanted to do. And I think doing it with uh, with Feldy was also a massive part of it. Um, he's such a great producer and he's so free in, in trying out lots of different lots of different things so it definitely is a huge step up for us we feel and uh yeah we we're very excited about it yeah you're making your own rules now man it's nice to see it's nice <laughs> to see you being able to take control like that and let's you mention feldy of course john feldman legendary producer i mean the list of people he's worked with over the years is unbelievable uh yeah talk to me more about the experience of working with him specifically because again he seems like quite a great mentor figure for bands in this world hmm yeah, I mean, I can't imagine a life without John Feldman now. Um, he's just, yeah, he's, you know, not just as a producer or an artist, just as a human being. He's so um, positive and energetic and just doesn't waste a second. Um, and just so full of support and love. And um, I think us, because as well as the first record and first time that we'd gone out of the UK to make music. So even that alone was kind of a real rebirth and, and it was fresh for us. And I think we all needed it after everything that had happened. Um, and as soon as we did the first session with John, we wrote three songs in one day and uh, they were all amazing. And they were all on the record. And uh, one of them, I want to know, which is the second song on the record, we wrote in 20 minutes with him. Um, wow. There was. Yeah, lightning fast. Minutes. I know there was twenty minutes left of the session, and me and Dan were actually kind of hung over. So we'd already got two great songs, and we were like, "This is awesome! Like, what a guy! What a day! Definitely want to do uh, more work with this dude." And then he was like, "Right, got twenty minutes. Who wants an espresso shot? Let's go for it." So he loved his coffee as well. That's his. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, we've heard yeah. that from quite a few bands over the years, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we had we had some espresso shots, and then we we wrote uh, "I Want to Know" in twenty twenty minutes, and I think that's one of the that was one of the first songs that really kind of set up the album and where we were going to go with it. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah it was it was crazy it was amazing to be around someone someone uh like that with that aura and it definitely had an effect and rubbed us on us, us. sorry rubbed off on us <laughs> <laughs> we got the phrase we know what you mean that's all good um amazing list of guests you were kind of bringing in as well let's talk about some of the people you work with on this record uh i know you've talked about them yeah. a little bit in the past but i mean pete wentz for a start that's <laughs> an incredible get uh how was it working with and, and meeting him yeah that was again wild like the whole <laughs> the whole experience was very surreal um yeah so there was travis obviously mental um josh dunn from 21 pilots came in um which was dope as well he was such a lovely dude um and then yeah the pete wednesday because john kind of obviously they're his friends so he was like oh you know i've got some you know people just coming by just to hang out um just for like good vibes in the studio um so they were coming in and then we we were in the studio and it's kind of halfway through the day and uh i was going over some lyric ideas and stuff and the door opened up in the studio and i thought it was dan or one of the guys so i was started talking about the song as if like guys here this bit da, da, da. and then i looked up and it was just pete went standing there just like kind of looking at me smiling and i was like okay right <laughs> I don't really know what to say here, but I guess nice to meet you. It was weird. Like I, you know, I grew up listening to him. I've been to see Fall Out Boy so many times. I had his bass guitar. Like it was a real trip. And then I'm like sitting there and he's, you know, rapping with me about, you know, why don't we try this or what about this? And then I, I got his number, you know, we're, we're, we're flying back ideas. So, uh, yeah, wow. it was wild. Like, do you want me to send you, you know, what I've got so far? How would you like me to send it to you? Email or phone number, you know, whatever. Thinking that, you know, he's not going to give this random little blonde English dude his number because he's Pete Wentz. And he just went straight up and did it. So, uh, yeah. What that's amazing, man. That's amazing. That's, I mean, again, that's got to be a pinch yourself moment. Like you say, growing up as a Fall Out Boy fan and then being not only in the studio with the guy, but he's wanting to actively work on your music. That's got to be an amazing feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it was so cool, and and uh, he he played us um, the latest Fall Out Boy stuff that they'd been working on, so we got to hear that before anyone else, which was dope. Um, yeah, very it was exciting, very man. cool, very very uh, exciting. And then you mentioned, of course, uh, Josh Dunn from Twenty One Pilots, amazing, amazing yeah. musician, such an amazing live performer yeah. as well. Uh, how was it yeah. working with him and bringing him in? Because he did he play on one of the tracks that's made the album in the end. He yeah, so Dark Times. Um, which is actually coming out soon. That's going to be the next single, um, which we're very excited about. So yeah, he, he, again, John just, he came down and he was like, Josh Dunn's coming in, 21 Pilots, we were like, amazing. And then he came in and he was just a super down to earth, really nice chatty dude. And, um, you know, we had this riff and we were just like spitting out ideas and building the track. And then obviously he was there and he's, such a, a great drummer as well so Feldy just asked him to get in and he did some bits and then and then uh Jack our drummer did some bits as well on top and and kind of merged the two ideas um so yeah it's, it was just an in incredible to be around again you know other artists that are you know huge and have had such amazing careers to then want to be in a room with us and work with us on this next chapter of our careers is it was really dope. It's, it's got to be a, a bit of a trip for Jack as well, I'd imagine, uh, getting to play with uh, <laughs> two two kind of pretty legendary drumming figures and Travis Barker and Josh there. That's absolutely crazy yeah. for him. Really, really cool. Um, the other yeah. name I saw mentioned around when you've been talking about recording this record, I don't know if it happened or not, but I've got to ask, you said there was maybe going to be a writing session or was a writing session with some of the MCR guys. Now, did that ever come to pass mm. in the end? So... Yes, there was talks and talks going round and round about this, and I MCR are probably my, you know, my soundtrack to my youth. I had the calendars, I had my Chemical Romance bags, I had the whole the whole thing. I used to be in my room painting my nails, doing my eye makeup like Gerard and stuff, and just singing away in my bedroom. So when I heard about that, I was like, oh my god, like freaking out more than anything, and then it kept going back and forth and it was like, oh, they can't do this day, can't do this day, blah, blah, blah. So then for the album, we never actually got round to doing it. But 
we actually then just probably about a week ago got another message saying that um, Ray, the guitarist from MCR, um, really wants to to write with us and 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 work with us um, and uh, hopefully Gerard as well. But he's super busy with all his shit. But um, yeah, so we're kind of working on stuff here that we can send over there and then. Ah, see. I see. Very very yeah, clever. So, yeah, so I get. I mean, I think it's gonna happen. Um, I'm praying that it's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, we're kind of just in the beginning stages. So we'll send some stuff and see see what they say and see what happens. But I'm fairly positive that at some point we will be in a room with them. So yeah, fingers crossed, man. And even yeah, hey, if you, even if you're not in a room with them, as we're realizing right now, technology is our friend in these crazy exactly. times. So yeah, get working in the house and uh, maybe send something over. And like you say, currently working on some new music. Is that how you're partly passing the time, you guys? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing, because of the situation, obviously, um, you know, it it sucks, obviously, but it's kind of cool as well to now be, you know, everyone's interacting so much more. And I think that's a that's a positive thing and a really nice thing. And um, fans have been asking us to do covers and we did the uh, Nirvana Come As You Are one the other day, which, which went down very well. Um, and that was fun for us to do. Like, we haven't done something like that in a long time. Um, so we've been doing things like that and then we've also been getting ideas down um, for our own music, um, maybe the next album or maybe just something that if it, if it comes ahead that we'll just put out. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of being very open at the moment and creating whatever kind of comes out. Yeah, nice way, nice way to do it, really. That's a nice attitude to have and just kind of see, see what happens while you've got the time. This is it, you know, it's an unfortunate situation for the whole world, but while you have that time, use it the best way you can, I suppose. That's uh, the yeah. way forward, man, the way forward. Yeah. Uh, last kind of question for you then, I guess, I mean, we've covered what's next. What is going to be next, I suppose, is uh, at some point this tour with Palo Royale, our very good friends here at Roxanne. Mm. That's got to be an exciting move as well. Have you met those guys yet? Have you had much of a chance to interact with them? We haven't met them uh, yet, but um, we have spoken to them back and forth on socials, um, and they seem really cool. We're super excited to go back to these, the States again um, and just get touring again, really. Yeah, like, obviously, we've, we've done the album now, um, and it's been a long time coming, so we're extremely just excited to get as much music out as possible and to play it finally live and play it to people and have people sing it back and you know have a classic hunter show just just go wild with everyone so that's what we love to do the most so um yeah we're, we're just super stoked to to get back on the road and and see everyone and 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 do this hunter mania yeah hunter mania 2020 man that's what we're looking forward to uh, it. right it's an absolute pleasure chatting to you man stay safe and uh, can't wait to hear the album in full and more new music and all that stuff all the best to you mate Man, thank you, man. Thank you. Of course, man. Appreciate it. Right, everybody. <laughs>